Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Chair Powell, for being here today. I have two questions I'm going to try to quickly uh, get through. The first question on the U.S. dollar dominance is kind of a follow-up to Congressman Torres's question. Uh, Chair Powell, in the National Security Subcommittee, which I'm the ranking of, we've been discussing the importance of preserving the U.S. dollar's status as a global reserve country. Can you share with us the current status of dollar dominance as it stands today and whether there are risks uh, are to the strength of the U.S. dollar in the international financial system? And if so, what are, what are some of the risks? So the, the U.S. dollar is still the dominant reserve currency um, in the world, and um, that is principally thought to be as a result of our you know, liquid capital markets, the rule of law, strong democratic institutions, uh, price stability over the years, op critically open, uh, money can come in and out of the United States uh, with, without all sorts of legal restrictions and things like that. All of those things are necessary to, be, to provide the world's reserve currency. We have them. There's not another economy that does have all of those features so as long as we are a country of rule of law and relative price stability and strong democratic institutions and open, open capital accounts, we'll, we, can, we can continue to be the world's reserve currency. History mm -hmm. shows that this is not a permanent uh, status, status, but it is a lasting one. And I think in the case of the United States, you know, the, if, as long as we maintain those characteristics of our, of our government and our country, then we'll, we can continue to be the world's reserve currency. Okay, thank you. L let me go to another question that um, will not be foreign to you. You know, as the former chair of diversity and inclusion, uh, I asked you and others of your colleagues, and let me just say for the record, Madam Chair, that Chair Powell was always on point, went out of his way, in my opinion, to make sure that there was fairness and equity for all people. Um, in light of that, I'd like to follow up with Congresswoman Waters' uh, com um, comments, and, and maybe uh, Congresswoman Velasquez, maybe what she was talking about. Uh, several of our colleagues here in, in the Senate, um, your, the person who preceded you, had been, it had been stated by many of us that we thought um, through banking deregulations, he was enabling risk uh, banking practices and failing to combat lending discrimination, which for some thought it might have perpetuated racial inequities. A few weeks ago, Chairman Powell, on June the 7th, to quote, you said that we understand at the feds that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. And everything we do at the fed is in the service to our public mission. Uh, so could you maybe elaborate, or the time ran out with Congresswoman Waters on, is there anything you'd like to share with us that you do at the feds uh, that would dispel that there are um, things that you're not looking at that causes one or members of Congress to think that it is perpetuating uh, racial inequities? Well, um, as, as you know, uh, we, we do consider, um, we, we call out uh, disparate economic uh, characteristics of different demographic uh, groups, including by race, and we want that fact, those facts to remain present in, in the room as we're making our decisions. We try to think of maximum employment as a, we do think of it as a broad and inclusive goal, meaning we're not just looking at the aggregate uh, level. I think it's important to keep those facts in your head as you think about monetary policy. I will say, though, that, you know, we only, we have one federal funds rate, and uh, we don't really have tools that address distribution and historical inequities and things like that. We Really, the Fed is not an agency that has those things. The best thing we can do for everybody, including in particular low and moderate income communities, is to maintain price stability in a very, very, over a long period of time, and, and on top of that, a very, very strong labor market. Those strong labor market conditions are the single biggest contribution we can make on, on this area. 
Thank you, and let me end by saying I appreciate your comments that you said you realize that high inflation imposes hardships as it erodes purchasing powers for food and housing from the least of us. Thank you so much for being sensitive to everyone.